take slavery, but there are two separate things in English, but they're combined in Arabic into the word ibadah and ubudiyah. So when, when the Messenger says, لا أعبدو ما تعبدون It doesn't just mean I will not worship. Also, I will not be enslaved to. I will not become a slave of. Very briefly, I'll remind you of the difference between worship and slavery. When Maghrib happened, we worshipped Allah. When Isha comes up, we will worship Allah. But in between the prayers, what are we? Slaves of Allah. When you're sleeping, you're not worshipping, but you're still a slave. When you wake up, when you're driving to work, brushing your teeth, eating your breakfast, you know, parking your car, even if you're not reciting Qur'an, or you're, you're, not work, you know, you're not doing an act of worship, you are still what? A slave. In other words, worship is specific acts. The act of fasting, the act of praying, the act of making hajj, the act of reciting Qur'an, the act of giving sadaqah, these are acts of worship. But a slave is a slave all the time, whether he does those acts or not. This concept is very powerful. It means we, we are to live according to what Allah, how Allah wants us to live, not just in Jumu'ah during the khutbah, and when the salah is going on, we are enslaved to Allah in between the prayers too. حَافِلُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى In the Salat al-Wusta, some commentary says it's between the prayers. Be connected to Allah too. You know what happens a lot of times? People worship Allah, but they still don't act like His slave. They worship Allah, they come pray Asr. I'll say, I got time for Maghrib, let me go catch a movie. And they come back from Maghrib. So they worshiped Allah, but they didn't act like what? Didn't act like a slave. Somebody owns a liquor store, comes to the Salah for five times. He worships Allah, but he's clearly not acting like what? A slave, he's not obeying Allah. And sometimes because we have these partial English definitions, you know what happens? We feel, we think to ourselves, hey, at least I worship him. At least I worship him, so I, my job is done. No, would you worship him, but you're still not a abd of Allah. Worship is one part, slavery is the other. Ibadah includes both. Now the Arabs, they had two problems. There are two problems. They refuse to worship Allah, but you know what the bigger problem is? They refuse to be Allah's slaves. There are two problems in this surah. We have to make those problems distinct. The prob- the, when they refuse to bow down only to Allah and grid- get rid of all the idols, what is that a problem of? Worship or slavery? That's a problem of worship. But when they refuse to give the orphan, when they refuse to not kill the baby girl, when they refuse to not feed the poor, when they refuse to not give justice, when they refuse to kill without having right to do so, when they abuse the slave, when they do all of these things, what are they refusing to do? They're refusing to act like Allah's slaves. Being Allah's slave includes you worship Him and you act like His slave. Two things. So now understand the ayah. لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ By the way, what time is the Aisha prayer? 9.15? Okay. So we, I think we hear quite a bit done inshaAllah. Hopefully even before the salah we might be finished. So لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ I will not be enslaved to and I will not worship what you have been worshipping. Now we have to understand, Allah, in this ayah, the messenger is being told to talk about what they worship and what they are slaves of. So what is it that they worship? And what is it that they're slaves of? They're worshippers of idols, false gods. And they are slaves of their own desires. Two things, they worship the idols, and they are slaves of their own selves, their own hawa, their own nafs. And the messenger says, I refuse to worship your idols, and I refuse to be enslaved to my own desires. I refuse both of those things. I am not, I'm never going to. Now, they, the, the mushrikun said, he's been rejecting our religion for a decade now almost. Let's give him a compromise, maybe the future. The Makkah has become pretty tense, you know. Always this confrontation between the Muslims and, non, and the kuffar. Let's make a compromise, life will become better. Their idea is we want harmony in society, from their point of view. And if we compromise, things will get better. There won't be any tension in Makkah anymore. So our future will be better. لا أعبدو According to most grammarians, the لا on the mudara actually more than present illustrates the future. In other words, the messenger says, don't have your hopes up. I am not going to. It's never gonna happen. I will never, if you're thinking the future is gonna be softer on you, I will never worship, and I will refuse to be enslaved to whatever you worship and you are enslaved to. That is never gonna happen, get that out of your head. 
Then come to the next ayah. وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدُ And by the way, you are not at all worshippers of, nor are you enslaved to. Now, عَابِدُونَ is an ism, is a noun here. What that signifies is, you have never been in the past, you are not now, and you will never be in the future, in any way, shape, or form, worshipping the same God I do, or be enslaved to the same God I am enslaved, of, enslaved to. That is never ever ever happened, and that will never ever ever happen. In other words, this is a guarantee that you will remain in kufr. To understand this ayah properly, why would Allah say they will remain in kufr? Why will they never believe? These specific leaders of Quraysh, why would Allah curse them in this way? The answer lies elsewhere in the Qur'an. Allah says, أَمْ أَبْرَمُوا أَمْرًا فَإِنَّا مُبْرِمُونَ Very important ayah. أَمْ أَبْرَمُوا أَمْرًا فَإِنَّا مُبْرِمُونَ To understand this ayah, you have to understand a very very important piece of vocabulary. The Arabic word is Ibram. Ibram. Ibram means to tie a rope for construction. You know in the old days, they didn't have cement. They didn't have cement. So you have two pieces of wood. How do you hold them together? You tie them up. But you can't take a weak rope. You have to take a rope and you have to double it. You know how you coil the rope? And then you twist it. That makes it stronger. Then you wrap it up twice this way, twice that way. You don't even knot it once. How many times do you knot it? Twice at least to make it strong. Meaning every part of this process is double, 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 double. To ensure that this rope will never be loose. That is the word Allah uses to describe the commitment of the kuffar to remain kuffar. Am abramu amran? Have they tied their rope when it comes to this decision? Are they that sure that they will never ever turn back? Because once you tie that rope, the intention is you never want to untie it. It's not like your shoelace, that you want to untie eventually, right? Allah says, are they so sure about the decision to remain kuffar, that they'll never go back on that decision? Is that the case? And if that is the case, فَإِنَّا مُبْرِمُونَ Then we have tied up our rope also. If they are so sure, that I am sure that I will leave them in kufr. And by the way, when they tied their rope, Allah Azza wa Jal used a fi'l, am abramu al fi'l al-madi, past tense. When Allah tied His rope, He used a noun. And you know the difference between a verb and a noun? A verb is temporary and a noun is permanent. In other words, even though they are sure they will never want to untie this rope and become believers, when they come before their own actions on the Day of Judgment, you know what's gonna happen, right? رُبَمَا يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ كَانُوا مُسْلِمِينَ Perhaps disbelievers will wish they had been Muslims, they'll try to untie their rope. But that's, it's too late then, it's too late. And so Allah says, فَإِنَّا مُبْرِمُونَ My rope is permanently tied. The noun is used, it's done, it's finished. And that was hypothetical. Is it the case that they've tied their rope? But here it is the case. Allah says al kafirun so it is the case. In other words, they made up their mind in fact. So Allah has made up their mind that not, never, don't be confused. You have never been worshipping what I did. Don't think that even before I was a messenger, we were on the same religion. No, 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 no. You were not. وَلَا أَنْتُمْ abidun. You were never worshipping, ever. Nor are you now, nor will you ever, what I am enslaved to now. A'budu is the present tense for the Prophet ﷺ. Very, very beautiful thing. You know what the word A'budu in the present tense signifies? He didn't mention his own past, he only mentioned his present. And that's beautiful, you know why? He never did shirk. The Prophet ﷺ never did shirk, we know that. But he really truly became Allah's slave when the revelation came. He was looking for it. وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى We found you seeking. And we guided you. Guided you to what? To be a slave. Guidance and being Allah's slave go together. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Immediately what? إِهْدِنَا عِبَادَةَ إِهْدِنَا هِدَايَةَ So the Prophet ﷺ is saying, now I have found true slavery. But even before this, you guys think we were on the same religion? No, we were never. Don't be confused about that. And what the powerful lesson here is, if you know that I've never been on your religion, and you're never going to be, you're never going to be in this, uh, you know, you're, you're never going to be worshippers of I am, we are set in our ways. So these two ayat actually have to do with the future now. These two ayat together, more than the past, they deal with the future. I will not be compromising, and you it is permanent that you're not going to be compromising, you're never going to be coming to the slavery of Allah and the worship of Allah. وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدٌ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ Now we turn to the past. Two ayat were for the future, now two ayat for the past. وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدٌ and I am not a worshipper of. 
I am not a worshiper of. In other words, I have never ever been enslaved to ma'abattum, what you have been worshiping. Don't think, first of all, don't think that your God was the same as mine, and also don't think my God was the same as yours. The one I was worshiping even before was never the same as yours. So if I've never worshipped your God before, before even Wahy came, I was disgusted by your religion. After the revelation has come to you, to, to me, you expect me to compromise now? <laughs> if I never even did shirk before this revelation came, it is even more impossible for me now that 